started this video wondering if photography could be a tool for contemplation. But maybe today it becomes more about whether or not vlogging is a hindrance to contemplation. I think it probably is. Predictably. So, I would imagine. Hi everyone and welcome to my first ever, maybe my only ever video. My name is John Pattison and I am a writer, I'm an editor, I'm a podcaster, I'm a husband and a father, I'm a Quaker, and I am a secret YouTuber. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. That's why it's so dark in here, I'm recording this at like 4 in the morning. But seeing as this is my first and maybe only YouTube video, I wonder if I can briefly explain to you where I'm coming from. You see, whether I'm writing a book or an article or recording a podcast, I hope that there is a theme that runs consistently through all my work, and that is that life is too short and too precious to be viewed primarily through the rear view mirror. Um, I make things that help people and really especially help me uh, slow down and open our eyes to the beauty and the wonder that's all around us. Now, from the age of six, probably the only thing I've ever wanted to be is a writer. Uh, writing is how I make sense of the world. It is how I think. It's often how I pray. In contrast, I've never been a very visually aware person. I'm the guy who doesn't notice that there's a new pendant light in the kitchen until four weeks after it was put up. But then last year, right around the start of the pandemic, I started doing a bit of photography, mostly nature photography, birds and wildlife, some landscape, some macro photography, and I absolutely fell in love with it. If writing is how I make sense of the world, photography has become how I see the world or helping me see the world almost as if for the first time. Photography has helped me focus, literally focus. Um, it's, I'm starting to see details for the first time. I'm starting to notice things, notice colors, notice how the quality of light changes um, over the course of a day. Uh, from one day to the next and then over the course of a whole year. Photography also has me getting outside more. You see, I like sitting. I like the sitting things. I like reading and writing. I like watching baseball. I like eating. I like rain more than dry. I like the shade more than the sun. But here comes photography and now I want to get outside and I want to walk and hike and camp and do, do those things that my wife always wanted me to do because that's what she loves, but I was just never, I was just not that into it. Something else that I noticed is that photography is shaping my inner life. Um, my family will tell you that I'm less curmudgeonly than I used to be. That's a nice way of putting it. I was a real grump. I still am, but less so than I used to be. And photography has become an important spiritual practice too. I mean, how could it not? The more I was paying attention to the world around me, the more astonished I became at just the, the beauty and complexity and the sheer aliveness of the world. The naturalist Chet Ramo said that seeing is praise. And one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver, said that attention is the beginning of devotion. And this got me thinking about whether or not there could be such a thing as contemplative photography. Um, I did some research and of course I found several excellent looking resources about that topic, including this book, um, Eyes of the Heart. Photography as a Christian Contemplative Practice by Christine Walters, Walters Paintner. I'm probably mispronouncing that and I apologize. Eyes of the Heart, Photography as a Christian Contemplative practice. And it's broken up into eight different chapters, each on a different aspect of contemplative photography. And each chapter of the book includes one or more um, photography exercises. I think she calls them um, photography explorations. And as I started going through them, I had this wild idea. What if I made a series of videos of me going through those explorations in the hopes that it would inspire other photographers to go through the exercises with their cameras. 
if I can do it, I'm the most amateur of photographers and certainly the most amateur of contemplatives. Um, if I can do it, maybe they would be inspired to do it as well. But now we get to the point where I admit that I am a secret YouTuber. You see, my wife and my kids have no idea I'm making this video. In fact, if I told them I was out here making this video, they would laugh me out of the room. And rightly so. I have no idea how to make a video. How will I even edit this? I have, I have no idea. And is this vlogging? Am I vlogging right now? Or is vlogging something that happens out there, like in, you know, away from your office and this is somehow different? But that's actually not the main reason why I think they would laugh me out of the room. The main reason they would laugh me out of the room is because for years, years, I made fun of YouTube. I made fun of YouTubers. I made fun of people who wanted to be on YouTube. Uh, I was so judgmental. And they will remember that. But then... Again, along came photography. And I found on YouTube a number of photographers to approach their work the same way that I hope to, which is as a craft, with passion, with humility. And so the idea is that instead of telling Kate, my wife, hey, I have this idea for this YouTube series, I would actually make one video and show her. And then say, what do you think about this? So week one of the book is about seeing with the eyes of the heart. And the mystics might call this third level vision. The idea is that there are three levels of, of seeing. The first is the, the physical sense of sight. The second is connected to knowledge. And so it involves reason and learning and intuition and imagination. The third level is the, at the level of the heart. There's a truck going by. The world is waking up. Um, my secret is almost out. So the third level is the level of the heart. This is where contemplative photography can help us go. It's at this level that we begin to become more aware of a thing for what it is and how it connects to everything else. This is really the level of, of deep presence. The photographic exploration that Painter gives us in chapter one is called 50 Images in One. And the idea is that you take 50 images of one everyday object, something you interact with all the time, but maybe don't give uh, a second thought to. Uh, you take 50 images of that, looking at it from every angle, uh, against different backgrounds, experimenting with different lights, and that you do this in, a, in about 15 minutes. And then for the next five days, you take just one photograph per day of something else that really captures your attention. The object I chose to photograph 50 times was this red pencil sharpener. It lives on my office desk. I use it basically every day. Yes, I use pencils. I love pencils, actually. Um, but really don't give more than a second glance to. And so, it's dusty. So I, uh, from the local pharmacy, I bought some different colored construction paper to use as background. To photograph it, I used my, my, cam my main camera, which is the Nikon D850. I used the 24 to 105 lens that's on here now. I also used uh, my macro lens. This is a Sigma 105 f2.8. And then, um, also last week, I got this really fun macro lens for my phone. It's from Moment. I had not really used it before, and I, I really only took one shot with it, which came out kind of interesting. I've used this a few times since then, and it's a ton of fun, but this actually connects to my phone via their, their case. Uh, so yeah, those were the tools that I used. Um, so let's, let's, let me show you a couple images. So when I first started making photographs, I felt very rushed, actually. I was very fixated on that 15 minute time limit um, to the point where I was even beginning to sweat, which did not seem to be in the spirit of the exercise. So I actually took a break. 
I walked away and I came back feeling much more relaxed. I didn't set a timer. I was aware of the time. I didn't want to take all afternoon doing it, but I wasn't really going to, to rush it. Um, that said, in full transparency, I ended up taking almost an hour. Um, I just was really so into it that I lost track of time. And so, and I was shocked when I had seen that it, that an hour had passed. What was also interesting to me is that the more time I spent with the pencil sharpener, this inanimate object, the more it seemed to, to come alive for me. Um, humans have a tendency to see familiar images in random shapes and patterns. And there's a name for this. It's called pareidolia. If you remember back to when you were a kid and you were looking up at the clouds and you might see in the cloud the shape of an alligator or a face or something like that, that's pareidolia. Um, and that's what started to happen with the pencil sharpener. From this angle, the pencil sharpener looked like a kind of surrealist elephant face. This one also reminded me of a face too, although it's a face with one eye and a shocked expression. Pretty soon, the whole pencil sharpener started to resemble a snail, which is which is kind of my thing. There was a kind of a sinister version of this too. I And I actually took this with the, the moment macro lens. I exposed for the rubber clamps that hold the pencil in place and that overexposed everything else around it. And then I shined a light through the back of the pencil sharpener, which created this kind of red glow. And the effect reminds me of the fires of Mordor, which I guess for a pencil, a pencil sharpener kind of is. So this strikes me now as second level seeing. It's um, ironic that I was spending so much time trying to see an object for what it is, only to have it start to resemble all of these other things for me. On the other hand, I was starting to see colors and textures in the pencil sharpener for the first time. For example, in this one, I noticed the pencil marks around the hole where the pencil goes in. This must be from when my kids or I missed the hole on the first try. And really, the more time that I spent with the pencil sharpener, honestly, the more beautiful it became. Um, and I even became grateful for the people who designed and made it. It's, I'm being totally serious. It came as a bit of a surprise for me. Um, here are a few more images that I took that day. So the next part of the exercise was to take just one photo per day for the next five days. And if after taking that photo, something else catches your attention, Painter says, don't take a photo of it. Just savor its qualities, be there without the camera. And so uh, that's what I did. Let's see what happened. 